can see it up here too. Uh, as you get up, it's all around. It looks like breakdown of the carbon fiber. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I've discovered a problem with my car, uh, engine heat, and we are gonna try to find a solution to fix that. So this could be pertinent for you guys with twin turbos, you guys that track your car, you guys with headers, you guys with aftermarket exhaust, you guys with cat deletes, any of those things. If you're having engine heat issues, potentially maybe today we can figure out something that can help with that. So let's get started. All right guys, so here's our problem. Um, this is a carbon fiber hatch and I have those headers and I have uh, that are coated ceramic and then I have non-coated cat deletes that follow down and then I have bare exhaust out the back with no mufflers. Basically it's um, of course a track. So I've got an extra hot exhaust system on my car and also have a carbon fiber hatch. So if you notice on here, and I'm gonna try to get as close as I can, uh, there are early changes of heat that I'm seeing where heat exits the engine bay, okay? So we're gonna try to find a solution to minimize heat and try to fix this. All right, so how are we gonna fix this? Um, these right here are underbody, basically air diverters, and they sit under the car, they bolt up, and they sit like this, and what happens is air hits here and gets diverted up into the engine bay on both sides. Now these are not the factory OEM ones, but they are OEM copies that were made by an individual. I'm gonna go ahead and post on the screen. Um, this is a Corvette Forum member. Uh, I don't have his first name. Uh, I attempt to reach out here to try to get his full name just to say thank you. Um, but he made copies of these because there was low availability from GM uh, there for a time uh, a few years ago. And because there was low availability, uh, he made copies for individuals and was nice enough to do that um, and allow them to purchase those so that they could put those on his car. Now, these are from German exports. So in Germany, they have gasoline particulate filters and they have different emissions standards than we have here in the US, okay? So those emission standards require that on their cars, you need to have those underneath it. And what it does is it takes air as it hits under the car, hits through here, diverts up, and then cools the engine bay and then exits through the hatch, which is right up on top. I'll show you there. And that's where it comes up. So it pulls air from the bottom, pulls it on up, and then exits through here. And so that's basically how it gives extra cooling to the engine bay, all right? So what I plan on doing is installing these, and I wanna test if they work, because I don't know that they work. GM says that they do, but we don't know. And these are not OEM, obviously, um, but they're extremely close, um, basically replicas, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I bought a infrared thermometer. This is off of eBay, I'll post a link here. Uh, it's relatively cheap. Um, obviously, you know, calibration and stuff is going to vary from different thermometers, but what we can use with this, since this is not a super expensive one is we can look at whatever the base number is and we can just look at the degree of change. And that's going to be pretty much how we'll have to use this just because being a relatively cheaper unit from China, um, I can't a hundred percent say that the temperature is going to be hundred percent accurate. So for that reason, as long as we look at uh, the same spot at the same time, uh, and then measure just the differences between, uh, we can kind of get an idea of what the change is uh, using certain spots, aka okay, headers and different spots in the engine bay to find the temperatures. Also, if you have one of these bi-directional scanners, uh, which I have here, this other one that I've used in my other videos, this will allow you access to your engine compartment air temperature. And I'm gonna try to get this to focus so you can see this. And this is telling me what my temperature is right now in my engine bay. And I'm not sure if it's gonna focus, but it says 62.3, um, which is about the degrees that it is right now. Um, so that's the temperature of my engine bay that I can actually monitor with my learned scanner. So I'm gonna be able to directly monitor my engine bay temperature, which is really cool. And on top of that, I'm gonna do spot checks of different components of the exhaust, like the headers, uh, the cat deletes and those things. And we are gonna get measurements. We are gonna drive for uh, roughly 20 miles at the same speed on the same highway, the same route, um, before and after the installation of these underbody air diverters, okay? Now, in theory, we should see temperature changes and we should see cooler temperatures with these installed. Now, these come with a caveat, obviously, um, you know, it's a high pressure system above the car, low pressure system underneath. That's what creates the pressure, downward pressure. So those are gonna take a little bit of that away. So you could potentially sacrifice a little bit of arrow because it's kind of countering what you want. You want a smooth surface underneath. But um, for my use, I think it's a necessary evil uh, as far as to keep the engine bay because it's very important, okay? So that's kind of where we're at. So we are gonna get started. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our baseline test. I'm gonna go down the highway. I will talk you through what we're doing. And then we will, after we test, we will take some measurements and then we'll get started. Okay, all right, here we go. 
So we've got a starting um, coolant temp of 187. It's 112 degrees in the engine bay right now, uh, our starting degrees. And we have an oil temp of 154. So we're going to go down and do a cruise. Same cruise for both tests. Okay, uh, for documentation purposes, um, I'm about to do a turnaround. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this video. Our temperatures are 112 degrees in the engine bay, 181 coolant, 151 oil. All right, so we're about to pull in. Um, 65 degrees outside temperature. And we did roughly 13 miles. It's showing 12, but I started on mile late. 13 mile loop. I've got 153 on your um, oil temperature and 176, 174 on my coolant temperature. So now we are gonna pull in real quick. I'm gonna swap these as fast as I can. Um, get out here and we're gonna see. And also my engine bay temps are anywhere between 109 and 112. Now they're 113. So gone. All right, so we're gonna get temps. Get the headers. I'm gonna stay at the same point. I'm resting my hand at the same spot. 115 between 108 and 115. Let's go to the other primary on the header. Make sure I'm hitting the right spot. Roughly 95. 95 on the second one. All right. And then we're going to take my intake 39 degrees. Okay. Then we're going to the other side. Resting my hand, first primary, 44, 140. There it goes, it calmed down. Okay, 110, 114. It should be the same as the other side, 113. So 120. Might be the angle I'm hitting it. So 114 to 120. Let's go to the second. Resting my hand. about 100 degrees second primary so the inside header is way harder than the outside header similar to the other side so inside header is harder than the outside header make sure we're on target yeah we are on target okay now we're gonna get them on okay in order to do this test I have to go really quickly so I cannot film this for very long I want to show you how this is gonna set and you'll see the end of it so basically these are gonna set on your bolts right here as you can see is this sets it's gonna set flush it's gonna push air up in and this is where the air goes, straight to the headers. And that's exactly in the cat deletes, which mine aren't actually even coded. Uh, and actually, I'm gonna get a temp of the cat deletes right now, since we're over here and I'm gonna install these real quick. So we're gonna shoot the cat deletes as well. Okay, 78 on the cat deletes, 80. That's from a distance. This side. Let's go up a little higher, sorry. So driver's side bank's hotter for whatever reason, it's A72 by 10 degrees. Okay, uh, two minutes later, they are installed. You can see that's where the air pushes in and it goes up, straight up. Air pushes in, goes straight up. All right, so let's go ahead and do our test. All right, so um, unfortunately this test is gonna favor the before, mainly because it's taking me a second to get this back on. Um, engine compartment air temperature sensor and I'm at 194 degrees right now, 65 outside. It's 122 in the engine bay. So the engine bay is hotter and everything's hotter right now on this part of the test. So if it, if it ends up being cooler, then that tells you that this does work. It's just a question of how much, so we'll see. So I've got to put it in drive. We're going to do the exact same route. Do some air flowing, 60 miles an hour, cruise control, same deal, okay? And our uh, temperatures to start with are a lot higher in the engine bay. So let's see where they level out at. And before, on the before test, it was 109 to 112 degrees. We're starting at 123 degrees right now. So 10 degrees more just because uh, all that heat radiated off the engine while I was doing the install and kind of sat. I pulled the hatch up to try to keep that from being the case. But because I had to sit here and idle, that heat is now generated. And unfortunately, that's what we're dealing with. Okay, I do want to show something in the middle of this. So we went from 122 to 117 within... 1.3 miles, so we dropped roughly eight degrees. Well, seven degrees now, seven degrees. 
115 uh, and we've only gone 1.5 miles. So now we're down to 114, which is still higher than our prior test, but we started a lot higher. So see where we end up. So now we're 113. So I feel like it's cooling down pretty rapidly right now, even at a rate of 60 miles an hour. Um, coolant temps are now down to 172. Oil temps are down to 162. You can see there on the screen. And we're now down to 112. So within two miles, we got back, actually now we're 111. Uh, we have gotten below where we were now we're 110. Uh, I've not changed anything on this test. We're at 110. It is one degree cooler outside, 109. Eight. Hope you can see that. See our other temps. We're now cooler than we were, and we started hotter. We're two and a half miles into this. So let's see how cool we can go. I'm going to put this. Uh, obviously, it's cooling pretty rapidly. 107. Uh, that's cooler than we were. 176 on our coolant temps, but those may not change much because it's all pulling from the front of the car, the radiators. All right. Turning around, I had to turn around to a slightly different spot about 100 feet away because there's a police officer. Um, I just get uncomfortable around police officers. So. And before I was able to turn and not sit here and idle, so that's going to change our results a little bit. I just hope these people do 60 miles an hour. All right, we're back up because all my mulling around at 110 when we sat there. So the bay temps without airflow move up to where we were roughly. Now they're coming down rapidly, 109. And we'll see where we land here in just a second just to kind of show you where we're at. All right, so we are 11 miles into this part of the cruise. We're sub 100. We're 98 degrees now. So that's 14 degrees less than what we were on the last test. Our outside temperatures have dropped uh, two degrees. So there's that, but it's definitely looking like roughly give or take 10% reduction in inch bay temperatures. And that's at a, a speed of 60 miles an hour now. I'm not an engineer, um, but I'm sure you can extrapolate higher air speeds and how much more that's gonna drop that temperature at 70, 80, 90, 100, whatever that might be. Because I doubt it's gonna be a straight linear thing all right, we're about to pull in to the house. I'm showing 99 degrees. It's been consistent. So I think this 10% figure is approximately correct. Uh, and that's at a speed of 60 miles an hour. So we're gonna talk about it here in just Okay, I hope I can focus on this. This camera does not wanna focus, but it's 105 right now and I pulled in the driveway um, and you'll see it rapidly climb. So let's go ahead and check our outside. Okay, so now we're going to look at our temperatures. I'll uh, try to put it in the exact same spot it was last time. Ninety. Let me make sure you can see where I'm at. Here we go. Okay. Eighty. Showing 116, depending on where you hit it, between 190 and 120, somewhere around there, depending on where exactly it is. And let's check our intake. 40. Now keep in mind, it's, this might be higher, this set, and it got hotter. So I'd expect this actually to be higher, mainly because I drove longer and there wasn't any cool down time, so to speak. So we're gonna go to the same spot on the header. 85 on the inside. I remember we got to, it was a 140 point. Let me just move it around to make sure I'm not missing anything. And we're 100 degrees, 80 degrees, 120. So if I go to the inside, oh, I know why. Because if you go to the inside, it's going to retain the heat because it's touching the other header. But on the top, it's a little hotter. Okay, so that gives us an average there. Let's look at the intake, 40 degrees. So. All right, so 
Okay. Right, guys, so that just about concludes it. Um, so since doing this, I uh, reached out to Justin with Horsepower Assess. He's purchased a set of OEM version of these, which they're a little different. It looks like the opening might be slightly smaller and they have more of a curvature, kind of like this on the backside. So the air is gonna hit, come further up and kind of go more towards where your vents are. So the air remains a little less transit time inside the engine bay versus this version is gonna kind of swirl it some because it's gonna hit further back. So it's all dependent on what you're wanting to cool. This version probably Probably good if you want to cool the backside, like your your cat deletes, your cats, or your exhaust, or like maybe you have turbos near, near the back. You want that everything towards the rear cooled more, or even like your groceries or those kind of things in your trunk. But OEM version is probably better for if you're just wanting straight up cooling that's going to go through and hit your headers and the actual engine and those kind of things as it's working its way out the vents and kind of push that hot air out. Uh, there's also a third option, which are these 3D printed versions. I'll post the link to the file in the comments. I did not make these. These are not mine. I'm not taking credit for that. But uh, if whoever did make this file would come forward, I will happily give you credit. Uh, but these have kind of a lower footprint, uh, a little bit smaller area. Um, easy to print, costs like $2, a dollar or something like that. This is ABS plastic. Um, I, I can't imagine there's going to be any issue. I haven't done any long-term testing on these to see how they hold up, but they're easily replaceable, easy to print another set should you have an issue. And this set has a nice curvature that's going to do more like the OEM as far as pushing that air, but also probably going to catch a little less air because of how this is set up um, right here as far as in the design. So this would be something somebody wants just kind of a mild footprint. If you want a kind of larger footprint, that's what I've got here. And then you've got OEM, you're just wanting to push as much air as you can straight out the vents, uh, which is probably going to be the, the most superior. So check out Justin's video. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, maybe somebody out there has already done some actual like track testing can come forward. Tell me what their experience was. That would be great to hear. Um, so motor easy. I appreciate it. Uh, take it easy.